Hey there, today we're diving into the rich history and vibrant culture of Ubud Royal Palace. In this video, we'll be unveiling a series of travel hacks for your visit to the Ubud Royal Palace and its surrounding areas. We'll provide essential information, transportation options, and delve into the captivating story behind the Ubud Royal Palace. If you're planning a trip to Bali, this is definitely a spot you don't want to miss. You have to look too far. You don't have to cover up your scars. You're perfect, darling, just the way you are. So before you think to... Now, let's talk about what you can experience when you visit the Ubud Royal Palace today. The residence of the Ubud King, known as Piri Saren Agung Ubud, has opened its doors to tourists. The royal family still resides within the palace and they are actively engaged in work, defying the stereotypical image of a royal family. One of the resorts where we stayed in Ubud during the trip is owned by the royal family. The local owner of a traditional Balinese house shared this short story with us during our stay at his Airbnb. Every night inside the palace, you can catch captivating Balinese dance performances like the Barong Uba dance and Legong. And the best part, the entrance to Ubud Royal Palace is free. Yes, you heard it right, no entrance fee. The palace is open every day from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and the dance performances start at 7.30 p.m and finished at around 9 p.m. Tickets for the dance show are priced at 100,000 Indonesian rupiah. Considering the palace sits right in the heart of Ubud, we'd suggest hitting the place up early in the morning to dodge the crowds and the scorching noon heat. Things start to get crazy after 10 a.m. when hordes of tours roll in and the streets turn into a chaotic mix of traffic and tourists. If you're aiming for a peaceful stroll through the palace and snagging some Instagram-worthy shots without a crowd as your backdrop, make sure to roll in early Bali rocks a tropical vibe, so brace yourself for both sunshine and rain. Tote around some sunscreen, a hat and a rain poncho or an umbrella. And don't even think about ditching the sunscreen in the morning. That sun can still roast your skin. Keep yourself hydrated, especially if you're wandering around the palace and its surroundings on foot. Now, one question you might have is, what should I wear to Ubud Palace? Well, the good news is there's no specific dress code. Most visitors wear shorts and sandals, but if you want to rock a sarong, go for it. Right across from the palace, you've got the Ubud Art Market. It's got these cool traditional shops, some good restaurants, and even a little food stall serving up that famous Balinese culinary delight. Now, most tourists head over to the monkey forest after visiting the palace. Personally, we don't think it's super family friendly from our experience. Those monkeys can be real cheeky, swiping your food or rummaging through your bag. We were just about to grab tickets and head in when we saw a monkey snatch an ice cream from people at a cafe and try to swipe someone's bag. After witnessing that, I'm traumatized and I decided to bail on the whole monkey forest plan. So if you're as timid as me, better think twice and make sure you're not lugging around any valuables or big bags when you visit. Let's chat about getting around. Getting around Bubid Palace is easy. You can grab a Gojek motorcycle or use Grab. We recommend taking a short walk away from the busiest road by the palace before calling Grab for pickup. Otherwise, you might get stuck on that busy road for over half an hour. If you prefer a more relaxed experience, consider renting a car with a driver. Trust me, it's worth it to navigate the sometimes tricky roads and avoid the parking chaos in popular tourist spots. Alternatively, you can snag a great deal on a Ubud tour package. So let's rewind the clock a bit and talk about the history of the Ubud Royal Palace. It all began in the 15th century when the May Javahit Kingdom collapsed, leading to a massive migration of Javanese nobles to Bali. This migration resulted in the creation of the Gelgel Kingdom, which in the 17th century expanded its power to various places in Bali, including the construction of small royal palaces like Sukhawati. During the construction of Sukhawati Royal Palace, many Balinese artists were sent to assist, and as a result, Sukhawati became the center of beautiful art in Bali, including dance, painting, sculpture, and Balinese music. If you're into exploring more spots in Ubud that are packed with Balinese traditional arts, sculptures, and architecture, make sure you catch our upcoming video showcasing a true hidden gem in Ubud.
Fast forward to the end of the 17th century when the Sukhawati king sent his brothers to secure Ubud from constant conflict. This move led to the establishment of the Ubud royal palace and the subsequent growth of Ubud's economy. And there you have it, folks, the fascinating history of Ubud Royal Palace and all the incredible experiences awaiting you. Ubud has so much more to offer. Don't limit yourself to just one day. Check out this video on how to plan your Bali trip to make the most of your itinerary. Mature Suksama. See you in our next spot in Bali.